Morning to you, Callum. By Good. the way, great advice, I think, from uh, Jake Berry there, because these you know, uh, big, big debates on television can make and break candidates. I mean, do you remember how back in 2010, suddenly Nick Clegg, right. Cleggomania, came out of nowhere <laughs> simply because of the debate? Would you describe yourself as a Clegg maniac, Mr. Fabricant? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can see through <laughs> no, I didn't him. Imagine I so. knew him. <laughs> I didn't imagine so. Well, with that in mind, though, well, let's start there, because the, 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 the conventional wisdom on TV debates is that the front runners have most to lose, and Penny Mordaunt is perhaps surprisingly in, in second place behind the former chancellor at this point so arguably she's got quite a lot to lose tonight well i'm afraid you're right callum uh that is absolutely true i mean this is an opportunity now for the ones who are lingering so um tom i think is right at the bottom there with uh 32 votes so he's got the best chance to win and rishi of course is the one who uh, has most to lose because he has the biggest support in the party I think the problem that Rishi faces is that, you know, he's, if you like, slightly tainted. Is that the word to use? Maybe not. But he's too connected with the previous administration. So every time he says, I'm going to do something, people are going to say, well, you've been Chancellor of the Exchequer. Why didn't you do it? Mm. On that note, actually, we've been asking our listeners for questions for you and for the other supporters of the other candidates as well throughout our programme this morning. Um, and Darren in Wiltshire texts to say, could you please ask Mr Fabricant what credibility he thinks he lends to Penny Mordaunt's campaign after being a repeated and vociferous defender of the disgraced outgoing Prime Minister? Well, I don't think he was disgraced, but I still back Boris. I actually think that the history books will say that Boris Johnson not only got us out of Brexit, not only got us the first vaccine programme, but months ahead of every other country in the world provided arms to Ukraine. So on the big, big questions, he got them all right. So I think it's all a little bit unfair, this disgrace thing, you know, because we could equally you just say said that Rishi's a, bit was a disgrace. Tainted. Didn't you? You just said that Rishi Sunak was, t was tainted by his association with the, the Prime Minister. No, tainted with the administration. I didn't say the prime minister. Oh, right. But he's in charge of the administration. <laughs> I use that in inverted commas, actually, because I don't want to say that Rishi is tainted. I think he would actually, you know, be a very good prime minister. But the problem he faces out there is that constant question. Well, if you're suggesting you would do X, Y or Z, why haven't you done it already? You were the chancellor. Hmm. But he, was, but he was the Chancellor to, to a Prime Minister who you defended, Mr Fabricant. So I'm, I'm confused about why Rishi is tainted by the Prime Minister, but, but you are not. <laughs> well, maybe tainted is the wrong word mm. then. But what I mean is, you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> I'm trying to work out what the distinction is between a Chancellor who stayed until the last minute alongside a Prime Minister who you say could be tainted by association and you who defended a Prime Minister <laughs> not undermining the credibility of your support I'm for Penny Mordaunt. The, the, I'm not saying he's tainted. I'm saying we're getting into this big tainted thing here. I'm saying that his arguments will be tainted. Maybe that's a better way of putting right. it. That every time he says, I would do X, Y or Z, people will say, well, you know what? You were part of the previous administration, so why didn't you do it? But, you know, the key thing about Penny Morton is that she's believable, she's credible, people like her, she's got the it factor, which I don't think the others have got. If you look at all the polling, uh, she's not only popular amongst the Conservative members who will be voting, the 180,000 Conservative members who will be voting between the final two when we've whittled it down, more importantly, she is actually the most popular in the country generally and the person that Keir Starmer does fear most. Mm, that's interesting. I wonder then what you make of, of, of very sort of stern and stark comments from Penny Mordaunt's old boss, Lord Frost, who says he has grave reservations about her as Prime Minister. And I suppose it's easy to kind of brush them off as, you know, he's a, he's a friend of Boris Johnson and perhaps he's just kind of living on that reputation a little. But at the same time, does that not, does that not kind of prick your conscience slightly in terms of, well, actually, if he has grave concerns and grave reservations indeed as somebody who worked with her, actually, we should, we should really investigate what he means by that. And it wasn't just David Frost. There were one or two others too, wasn't there, Callum? Yeah. And what the point is, is the timing of it. It all came out yesterday. 
<clears throat> if it had got grave concerns, why didn't you mention it before? I, I'm afraid I think it's dirty tricks. Mm. I'd love to know who's actually put him up to it. He'll deny it, of course. But it's very clear to me, and I don't think he's actually cutting much ice with the MPs who are voting at the moment. I think it's all very clear to me that some of the front runners are very, very worried about Penny Morden. Interesting. Uh, let me just put another topic that's really become uh, really clear from our listeners in terms of what they want more information on. That's something we've been we've been really um, considering this morning. And I have to say that the, the two big things that have come through from our listeners this morning are the cost of living crisis and the climate emergency as two areas where they feel really that they don't have enough information from any of the candidates, actually, Penny Mordaunt included, on, on what they will do if they become Prime Minister about the cost of living crisis and the, and the climate emergency. Do you have clarity from, from Penny Mordaunt on, on these areas? Well, I certainly do on the cost of living crisis um, in that, for example, I do, you know, she hasn't published her full manifesto yet, but she said already that she would reduce the cost of fuel at the pumps by halving VAT. I think that's actually very important. You see, Rishi took the view, and I keep picking on Rishi only because he is Chancellor of the Exchequer or was Chancellor of the Exchequer. Um, Rishi has allocated money to people, which I think is very, very important. And yesterday, you know, people receiving £300 plus into their bank accounts who are, you know, the people on benefits. And, you know, we applaud all that. But actually, it doesn't help inflation because the prices at the petrol pump, the prices in restaurants and all the rest of it, and more importantly, in supermarkets are still very high. Now, a few weekends ago, I was in France, and I was filling up my hire car with petrol mm. and I noticed on every single petrol pump, there was a sticker that said 15 cents in every litre has been reduced or given to you by the government of France. And I think we should be doing the same. And this is exactly what, um, Pen what uh, Penny Mordaunt mm. is suggesting with reducing VAT. I think, you know, by doing that, it reduces inflation sure. and it also helps the situation with people like the RMT who are on strike, who are saying, come on, we need more money because costs are going up. If we can reduce costs at the pump in the supermarket, that will be a, a major achievement. Yeah.